and I'm back in my normal morning slot time. Uh, I don't really uh, have a good idea of what I'm going to talk about, but um, I think I think today I'll settle on one one issue also involving my my journey to the east. I'm not trying to be pretentious about that, trust me. Uh, it's not that rare of a thing these days, as, uh, as I'll point out. So, without further ado, let me say that the place I went to, and there's a reason why I'm not mentioning it by name, because I don't, I want it to be any place. I want it to be, it could be anywhere. It should be anywhere. Now, of course it's a specific place in the world, a specific country that I went to, but I don't, I don't want it to be thought of like, this is the only country that could be like this, or this is perhaps a unique situation. No, this, this is the way most countries used to be 150, 200 years ago. Um, that is, once again, a homogenous community, uh, uh, a culture that is intact, people that are similar to each other, and thus have communal bonds with each other. Um, once again, it's a really special thing to see, and I think, uh, and I'm not saying you're unfortunate if you haven't seen it, you can be a very fortunate person in the West. Uh, economically speaking or whatever, and you could have never seen this because, you know, who, we tend to associate these things with the third world. We tend to think that, uh, oh, well, if it's a bunch of people that don't look like me and if their income is not as high as mine, then it must be third world and I don't want to go there because it's dangerous. Uh, I mean, you know, there's, there's a certain degree of that. And <laughs> a lot of people I, I knew thought I was going to be kidnapped when I first went to this region. They thought something bad was going to happen to me. But, um, so that, that's what I mean by, like, you can be decently well off in the West and never have experienced, uh, um, true culture. When I say true culture, I don't mean that <clears throat> another culture is better than ours or your own but that you have been deprived of your culture through diversity and multiculturalism. Uh, so, so let me talk a little bit. I'm always talking about, about how we need to protect ourselves and that, you know, I want a future for my people. But let me tell you, I was a liberal. For the longest time, I hated my people. That's why I even got interested in the East. Uh, in a, the, this, I won't say hated, but just total disinterest. Uh, I had, you know, felt like I would, things were whitewashed for a long time, and I hate that term now because I think it's a racist term, but, uh, and racist against white people, not racist against others. But, I gather myself here my morning coffee once again. Okay, so. So, yeah, for the longest time, I, I was really disenchanted with my culture and my people, and I thought, oh, well, you know, other places are better because they're different, and it was, it's part of that upbringing that, like, oh, other cultures are better, but white culture is stupid. Uh, you should hate yourself. Like, this is the indoctrination that we've been receiving. I've been receiving all throughout the late 80s, 90s, you know, right up till now. So I easily, as a liberal then, I easily fell into the trap of, uh, oh, I shouldn't like my own people. I should go and seek the exotic and, and stuff like that. Well, I want to talk about my race, especially, as being a negative force in 
in other areas of the world, even the third world. Um, now, obviously, we help in terms of agriculture methods and international aid and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm not saying that we haven't benefited mankind, but uh, let, let me give you an idea of what I mean. I traveled about as far away from where I am as physically possible. It was an arduous journey. It wasn't just long plane flights. It was, it was bumpy boat rides for hours. It was uh, a winding on <laughs> winding cliffs, uh, uh, winding roads like overhanging cliffs and, and stuff for just hours and hours. It felt like it never end. But then finally, I got there, the end of the earth, and it was a place that of much beauty, right? But after this long journey, this, this journey that just about killed me, um, I don't travel too well, but... I get there and everyone's white. <laughs> no, I was traveling during spring break. Spring break time, so I should have expected maybe more of this, but... I get to the ends of the earth, where there should be not a single person that looks like me. Now this isn't my whole trip, this was just a small part of the trip. Uh, but I'm talking about a very specific place, that's why, um, that's why I'm talking about encountering people of my own race. Like, you go into an establishment, of which there were not many, and there were just, like, everyone in there was, was white. Mostly Americans, uh, but a lot of Germans, Australians, you know, people from anywhere. And uh, they're mostly young, mostly seeking to get shit-faced, and kind of being like globetrotters. Uh, it really reminded me of the movie The Beach. Everyone will say that. A Leonardo DiCaprio movie from, I believe, 1999, or was it 2000? I don't know. I think it was, I, think it was, uh, I don't know. It was right around that time. These people, they're, they're seeking escape. But they're not, they're not pure love of travel kind of people. They are shit-facers. They are people that just want to get sloshed in a strange place. And essentially, what they don't realize is they think that they're experiencing culture by going to some faraway place and getting drunk with a bunch of other white people. Um, when that's not necessarily the culture at all, getting wasted there. And... Um, they're essentially just bringing their culture to some beautiful place, and I, I don't want to say ruining it, because I don't... Like I said, I don't hate my own people, but I, it's hard to not see this in a negative light. And, you know, it was just... It was mostly ugliness that I saw of my, my people, being white people, in this area. And I felt like I'd come so far that I deserved an escape, but I didn't get it. <laughs> At least not there. And uh, I don't know what these people were doing there, because they weren't naturalists, they weren't, uh, like I said, they weren't people that were interested in the exotic more than, like, they could just get wasted and, like, be like, whoa, look at that kind of <laughs> experience. But the, they they were just like the byproduct, right? Or they're just like the, the catalyst, I guess, for what I'm going to describe as the ugliness of how our culture was affecting this beautiful area, this beautiful remote area. Um, everywhere. I, I remember talking to the people in my group um, who were natives. Uh, <laughs> people in my group uh, told me that they had been there three years ago. And that there was one bar on the beach, but now there were countless amount of bars on the beach, and just it like there were so many young hipster, like white hipsters, sitting on the beach drinking, like it was. You might as well have been in New York or something. I, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, you know, once again, I'm not trying to bash my own people, but uh, it was a little disappointing, I suppose, from a traveling point of view. Now, there was construction 
all up and down the town, and also even out into the countryside, there were construction projects. They're building stuff. They're building resorts. They're building... Who knows what they're building? My fear is that they'll be building tall hotels, like Holiday Inns and Radisson's and Hilton's and... Everything that you go there to escape. That's what our people are bringing there. And you can't expect people that are, uh, once again, perhaps third world conditions to reject their money. You can't expect them to. Like, they, they, they don't... You know what? They'll take the money because they have a family and they'll build the hotels. And there's going to be probably an airport made soon, so it won't be that far. I'm worried it's going to become the next Cancun, uh, which is a spring break location for, like, teenagers and 20-somethings uh, in Mexico that everyone from the U.S. goes to. It's just going to become another one of those <laughs> beer-slash-urine-soaked former paradises. And that's what we do to the world. That's what that's Western culture. That's what we're bringing. And uh, I, I'm sad to think that like my, some of my money went toward contributing to this during this this trip. You know, the, I say that the trip to this place, part of it is by road, and it used to not be paved uh, five years ago. It's paved now, and the vehicles transporting white people like me from the airport to this far area. They go as fast as they possibly can, and uh, you say, oh, what's the, who cares about that? Well, when it was not a paved road, they'd have to go slower, or they'd just fly off the road, right? Or something horrible had happened in the car. But now, they go so fast that whenever they take a small five-minute break, they, they pull uh, chicken feathers out of the grill and check the front for dog and baby carcasses and stuff. And there were many times, like, we almost ran over villagers carrying children and uh, just blowing by these areas, these traditional areas, and I'm, t I'm just like, to bring me to the beach, <laughs> I felt like a piece of shit for that, and like how many times, how many near-death experiences these children, you know, and just coming one right after the other. Blazing through. <laughs> Didn't used to be like that five years ago. That's what we're bringing to this area, this wonder of the world. <laughs> I think it should be one. I don't know. It's pretty awesome. So we're not all good. You know, it's selfish of me. And I, I'm the first one to admit like a lot of these travel writers uh, from the Gilded Age and stuff, they were selfish. They, they, they were very moral. But you have to understand the act of traveling to a foreign area is selfish. It's a selfish act because even if you have the, nothing but the best intentions, you are changing that place through your money, through the impression you're making, through just your presence. You're changing that place. So I'm completely acknowledging that uh, it was a selfish act for me to go across the world. And I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, I'm just saying that you have to be able to admit that it is an act of selfishness to a certain degree. Uh, and this is the white introspection that people on the alt-right talk about that maybe perhaps has led to self-hate. But um, once again, we're so eager, we're so confident that we're right over here, that we're correct about uh, things like uh, diversity and all this other stuff when we actively throw money at and seek out escape from this very diversity to a place that is still intact, still homogenous, uh, that still has a sense of tradition. We, we seek these places out and subconsciously, through our money, through our presence, through our selfishness, we slowly or quickly convert those areas to be like the West. And this is a perspective that I don't think many have understood, especially those who go there to these places. So I'm going to go ahead and end that there. Hopefully uh, these points were coherent and uh, maybe more to come later. Catch you later.